Okay, it's another Friday evening Bible study. So welcome to the Spirit of Prophecy Church Bible study. I uh, am praying that I will not let the cat out of the bag. I'm not going to give away any secrets uh, about our vision to find oil in Israel because I'm going to be covering some very important verses, but I'm only going to be covering them saying one thing. Yes, there is oil in Israel. Because some of the verses, if you understood them, if I were to explain them, you would, <laughs> I would be giving away some secrets. And the secret that everybody wants to know is where do you drill and how deep do you drill? And that's, of course, the very thing that we're not going to tell. So uh, it, it's going to be exciting evening. And I see a few people jumping on. So we got about 60 seconds before the official time to start. And let me say hello to Otham A. Brand that's always on. By the way, Patty Cake for Boss, I got a feeling that that means <laughs> your name is Patty. You have four children, and you're the boss of those children. Just a guess, wild guess, but it's a good guess. Uh, let's see. And then we have blessings from upstate New York. And... I saw our government is tracking another blue flag across the Southwest. Man, our nation is falling like a rock. Manny from Chicago. Hello, Manny. Jake, or is that Jack? Blessings from California. Uh, as we're jumping on, got up to 21. I guess that's on YouTube. YouTube just has the biggest audience for us. It, it does. Anyway. All right, it's 6.30. Let's start. So, Lord, you did say that wherever two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. We know that wisdom and might are yours. You change the times and seasons. You removeth kings and setteth up kings. You giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. You revealeth the deep and secret things. You knoweth what is the darkness and the light dwelleth with you. And, Lord, tonight we say, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Because you were slain, has redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Lord, we gather tonight in your name, and we sincerely ask that you show us the deep and secret things. But Lord, I also ask that you don't let me reveal any of the secrets. Don't let me say anything I should not say, anything that would jeopardize our vision, our call to find oil in Israel and present it to Israel in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let me first start with how I got into this oil business because <laughs> I never thought I would. Be okay, so I was raised in Odessa, Texas, and literally went right across the street. Matter of fact, I was just by there a few years ago, and it's still there. Right across the street is a pump jack. You know, one of those things that goes, mm, mm, pumps oil, okay? It was there 20 years before I got there, and it's been there now for, I don't know, what, another 25 or 30 or 40 years. I mean, it's a long time. So I literally grew up next to an oil well. All of my friends made that there's there's bumper stickers that you see in cars there that said oil feeds my family and pays my taxes the kids that i went to high school with almost all of their fathers and then when they graduated they also went on out and worked in the oil field they have a saying around the odessa midland area that the folks in midland own the oil wells and the folks in odessa work on them and repair them and there's a lot of truth to that and I had a good friend, Larry, I'll even tell you his name, um, that was killed in the oil, fizz, uh, oil business, oil field. Uh, what happened was he came upon a tank battery. This is those big round tanks, okay, tank battery. That's what they call them, tank battery. And uh, two of his other buddies had gone up into the top of it. I don't know what they were doing. I never got the whole story. But anyway, they had fallen down inside the tank and he thought they were dead. Now, this is a guy that was 22 years old. He was the high school quarterback. 
He was the track champion. He was the guy that was going to be, you know, the guy that, that won it all. Uh, the, the, the most popular, the best looking, the, the, the best of the best of the best, best, best. And uh, he was one, one year older than I. Anyway, he uh, went up there, saw these two guys had fallen in a tank battery, went down in the tank battery, and was able to throw these two guys. These are full grown men. This is a 20, I don't know, 20, 21 year old guy. And he threw them over his shoulder, brought them out of the tank battery. But he himself collapsed and died. He died from H2H, H2S, which is hydrogen sulfide. And it is the great oil field killer. It is the thing that every oil man is afraid of more than anything. It's colorless, it's odorless, and one whiff, and you are a dead man. Heard another story about a pastor one Sunday morning that got a call from one of his congregation members that something was going on and he didn't know what it was. Please come and help him. So this pastor drove up there and saw that there was an oil an oil well close to there. And he said, I saw a big cloud of like gas. And he said, I drove around the house and then I left because I was afraid of the gas. And come find out the whole family was dead because this, yeah, I mean, things come out of the ground, okay? This H2S had come out of the ground, and instead of being blown away like it would normally happen, it was cold, and the wind wasn't blowing that morning, and so it just kind of covered like a big bubble over these people's house, and mom, dad, all the children, all dead from H2S. So I have had no love for the oil industry. I never wanted to be in it. I never want to have anything to do with it. I remember distinctly driving down the road and, you know, when you're in an oil country, you never know when you're going to drive through a pocket of what they call sour gas. And it smells like somebody cut the cheese. It's terrible. It doesn't smell like sulfur. It kind of has a sulfur smell, but it's terrible. So I never wanted to be in the oil business at all. Now let's skip to the next point. So in uh, 1998, I had the opportunity to interview Hayseed Stevens. Hayseed was a part-time uh, pastor, a full-time oil man at Willow Park, Texas, which is out in the area just west of Fort Worth in the minerals, uh, mineral wells area. And he had been invited by a group of other businessmen to go to Israel to meet Menachem Begin, then president, excuse me, the prime minister of Israel. And he said while he was there, he said the Lord spoke to his heart and said that the world's largest oil field is located at the southwest end of the Dead Sea. He said, well, if that's true, it's got to be in the Bible. It's can't, if it's not in the Bible, I can't tell the people. So he found 17 verses in the Bible that say in the last days, massive amounts of oil would be found in Israel. Can I, I have found 63. I'm going to cover those 63. I will tell you that I won't exactly explain everything about them. There might even be one that will pop up, and I'll just pop right past it. I won't even say anything about it. Because I can't, there's certain things I can't say. So anyway, we put Hayseed Stevens on a 10 city speaking tour, going out casting his vision to find oil in Israel. He later said that blew financial life into his vision to find oil in Israel. But in 2003, he fell dead of a heart attack. And long story short, his son took over the company and things didn't go so well. So in 2007, his former attorney, called me and asked if I would be willing to start a new oil corporation to continue the vision to find oil in Israel. My exact words to his answer was, no, probably. I mean, I'll pray about it, but probably not. So my get me out of this prayer that night was, Lord, as you know, I don't have any extra $5,000 laying around someplace. Give that attorney to start some oil company. So if you want me to do this, send the money. I thought that was a great prayer. Next morning, Phone call came in from the office. I live in the DFW area. The office is in Topeka. They called and said, uh, lady called, want to talk to you about oil in Israel. I said, why these people keep calling me? I don't have anything to do with oil in Israel. Well, she's been a faithful $50 a month partaker now for over 10 years. Thank you, I to call her. I was going to call her anyway, but, you know, that puts a little bit more obligation on me. Thank you for calling. The reason I asked you to call is two nights ago. The Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and told me to give you $30,000 to continue the vision to find oil in Israel. My exact answer was, 
well, fine. <laughs> she said, what? So I explained to her what was going on. She sent the check. It cashed. So we started Prophetic Oil Company, Prophetic Oil Corp Incorporated. And we started it January the 2, January 2nd of 2008. So I set up an 18-city speaking tour from Beaumont, Texas, all the way up into Minneapolis, Minnesota, casting the vision to find oil in Israel and also that uh, the suitcase nukes and Dimitri's message, you know, there's a whole evening. So on June the 14th of 2008, I had just spoken in Amarillo that night, and after I went to bed, I prayed as I do every night. Lord, I uh, hope you're pleased what we're doing because... <laughs> Now it's going so good. You know, we're, we're spending $3,500 per city uh, in a meeting, for a meeting. Not many people showing up. Not many people getting saved. Not many people interested in prophetic oil. And that night, God spoke to me. And I heard words. And they said, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. Well, that woke me up. And I, I didn't set up. I mean, I still laid in bed. And I spoke out loud. And I said, the oil well in Israel? But there was no answer. <laughs> he was like, son, I said all I'm going to say. Well, you know, in, 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 with my personality, I was always getting people approaching me with these get-rich-quick schemes. And up to this point, I just ignored them politely and excused myself out of them. I don't have anything to do with them. But after that, I thought, okay, well, maybe I should start listening. Well, shortly after that, sure enough, God arranged me get, to get me into one of those get-rich-quick schemes. And I am at now in it, and I am under a non-disclosure agreement. And that gave them permission to monitor my cell phone, my emails, uh, yes, everything about me, to see that I do not break it. So I cannot talk about it. But it is an opportunity. It is the opportunity of a lifetime. And I believe that that is how God is going to give me the money to drill the well in Israel. Okay, so, seemed like there was something else I wanted to say there. Well, the Lord's guiding the conversation, so if he wants me to say it, he'll bring it back. Okay, so, now let's talk about oil. Okay, so, Hayseed found 17 verses that say massive amounts of oil will be found in Israel. But he's not a prophecy teacher. He's not a prophecy student. He's a pastor. So I got started in it. I've now found 63. I'm going to cover those 63 verses with you. And I'm only going to be talking about, I'm kind of talking to myself more than I'm talking to you. I'm only going to be talking about just oil in Israel. I'm not going to be giving away any of the secrets. Because if oil people knew what I know, Oil would have been found in Israel a long time ago, short of God stopping them. And God, it wouldn't be the first time God has stopped someone from finding oil or gold or diamonds or anything else. I mean, it's, he made heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things therein are and the sea and the things that are therein. And he's quite capable of handing them to whomever or keeping them from whomever he wants to. Okay, so let's get started in the scriptures. I guess I should probably say I'm all ready to go. I'm all ready to go to Israel and start drilling. I can't tell you how many nights I have drifted off thinking, praying, planning, uh, you know, the first steps, what I plan to do, where it all happens. When's it going to happen? I don't know. If you'd ask me that, I'd have said five years ago. It's going to happen this year. Four years ago, it's going to happen this year. So I don't know. It'll happen when God wants it to happen. Okay, so let's get on to the scriptures here. All right. Uh, there you go. I had it all prepared for once. Okay, so we, I'm not going to read the scripture location because that'll slow us down. It's not important. You, If you want to know where it is, you can look on the screen. And the veil vale of Sidim was full of slime pits. Now, what's that? It's saying the Valley of Salt, because down, on, and I have been there several times, down at the Southwest, and by the way, I've got a whole PowerPoint presentation that I've had prepared for at least five, maybe even eight years. I don't know. I prepared a long time ago and have continued to add to it, but I've not released it. I've not, not recorded it. 
and I'm not going to release it before we find oil. But after we find oil, my plan is to release that, not to say this is we what we want to do, uh, but instead I'm going to say this is how we found it. Okay. And by the way, I need to give you a disclaimer. We cannot guarantee we're ever going to drill for or hit oil in Israel. And we are not selling stocks or any kind of securities in this program tonight. As a matter of fact, we are not offering stock at this time. We have not offered it for several years. Why? Because I saw something. We offered it for a couple of years, and I saw that it was pennies when I needed millions of dollars. I saw that there's just no way uh, good Christians are ever going to have the money to drill. I mean, it, take, it takes about $50 million to drill a well in Israel. And I just saw it's not going to happen. God's going to have to send the money. And as he promised, he will send the money. And he will send the money when he is getting ready. Hang on just a second. I want to make sure I've got this right. Hmm. It's not showing something. But if it works, it works. That's fine. All right. Anyway, so what it's saying is the Valley of Salt. So it's southwest end of the Dead Sea. That whole area there is a giant salt dome. So, well, if you go into Beaumont, if you look up the first big gusher well, I'm trying to remember the name of it, and it's not coming to me right now, because um, I haven't studied this stuff in years. Anyway, some of the biggest oil finds have been found under a dome of salt. And I don't know why that is. It's just that's the way it is. So it says, in the Valley of Sedim, that means the Valley of Salt, was full of slime pits. Okay, what's a slime pit? So you push F10, and hang on got to do this. Push F10. This pops up. Oh, you're not able to see that? Really? They're not showing you that? Okay. Well, I click on slime pit and it brings up the word chemar. And that is bitumen. And it means as, as rising to the surface. I assume you couldn't see that. That's sad. So what it, slime pits is saying is it's crude oil. Now, let's talk about crude oil a second. See, a lot of people like Shell, the reason they call themselves Shell is because they're trying to put forth the idea that this comes from pre-flood plants and animals. And then there's another one called, um, what's the one with the dinosaur on it, okay? They are trying to tell you that this is from pre-flood plants and animals, and it's a limited source. That's not correct. That's a lie. At least I believe it is, and I can't prove it. But I believe, the best minds believe, that is actually created approximately 25 miles down, which is about five times further than mankind has ever drilled. And it is created on a continuous ongoing basis because of the elements down there and the rotation of the earth. And it is continually made. Now, how do you know that? Well, there have been cases where there have been pockets of oil found and they will drill and pump the oil out and the well goes dry. So they cap it. Then two, three years, five years later, they come back and all of a sudden there's oil out there again. Okay, so did there's a did they find a bunch more dinosaurs and poke them down the well so that they could get oil out of the dinosaurs? No, it's just that it is continually being created. And the way, in my opinion, so the oil is down really, really deep, like, like 25 miles down. We can't reach it, couldn't begin to reach it to the actual source but there'll be a little crack and it'll come up this way or it'll come up that way or come up this way. Finally, it gets close enough to the surface where our measly little hands can drill into it. The deepest well ever drilled was drilled by the Russians to 40,000 feet. What's that? All right, let's see. Five, that's about five miles down, 40,000 feet, five to 5,280 feet to a mile. So uh, we can't reach 25 miles down. <laughs> At least not that we're told. I'll leave it there. Anyway, but what happens is the oil finds cracks and crevices that come up closer to the top. That's where we can access it. But it doesn't always have full pressure. And what's full pressure? I You recall the um, Deepwater Horizon out in the Gulf that was a big oil platform that caught on fire here five years ago. And they said that that was at 20,000 PSI. They said that one oil well had they been able to bring it in, could have supplied 
America with all the oil it would need for 100 years. One well. I think that's what we're going to hit when we drill in Israel. But anyway, so the Valley of Sedin was full of slime pits. In other words, full of where this oil had just collected like a lake up on top of the surface. Now, you have to remember, this is uh, 3,500 years ago before the sand covered it up and this and such, but it's still there. I can show you pictures. I'm not, but I can show you pictures. I've been there. I've been to where oil is oozing out of the side of the ravine. I've got pieces of it. Unfortunately, by the time, you know, drips, but by the time I got home, you know, they were in a little plastic container. It was just all puddled at the bottom. So, you know, we didn't think about all that. I'm saying I've been there. I know it's there. All right, let's go on to the next one. Huh. All right, here, I've got to get this down right. Okay, next one. This is, you remember Jacob called in Esau. And he says, go fetch me my favorite deer. Bring it to me. I'm going to prophesy to you before I die. And of course, Jacob, I got that right, Isaiah, Isaac, excuse me, Isaac, called his son in. And instead, Jacob got in there first. I'm getting that right. Jacob and Esau, that's right. Jacob got in there first. This was what Isaac prophesied to Jacob. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. That word fatness right there. Let me see if you're seeing that right. Okay, yeah, okay. That word fatness is talking about crude oil. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee and be to thee and be Lord over thy brethren or thy brothers. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee and cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesses thee. That's the best blessing. What he was saying is God is going to give Israel, that's the descendants of Jacob, massive amounts of oil. Okay, so then, Esau comes in, and he's crying. Hey, you mean you don't have any more blessing? He says, okay. So this is what Isaac prophesied to Esau. Your dwelling shall also be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when they shall have the dominion. And I think that that's when they the Arabs struck oil, the meaning thou shall break his yoke from off thy neck. So all of that has come to pass, except oil is in Israel. It just hasn't been released by the hand of God. And I think that's one of my calls in life. Okay, now let's jump to the next year. Again, there's other scriptures that I could back up and read. We can spend hours at this, but I'm just showing you the, the 63 most important ones tonight. Out of Asher, his bread should be fat. That word fat is crude oil and he shall yield royal dainties. In other words, when he hits crude oil, then he's going to have royalty. He's going to have extreme wealth. And then we go to the next one, down verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well. Now, I don't think that that is a tree that has a bow by it. I think he is made wealthy by a well, because of a well, because of an oil well. I believe that's what it's saying. Now, let me, let me say something about this. Some people would look at a scripture and say, well, that's not exactly what the black ink on white paper says. Or a person that can read modern Hebrew would say, that's not what modern Hebrew says. Or if a, peop a person can read ancient Hebrew, which looks very, very, very different than modern Hebrew. Ancient Hebrew is what Ron White said the Ten Commandments were written in. So since Moses wrote these words. This was probably originally written in ancient Hebrew. And there's a lot of changes in the understanding. I believe the King James Version is the correct version. Uh, but I also think that there's some misunderstandings that we, in other words, we can't exactly understand it all by just ink on paper. I, I saw that when I memorized the book of Revelation. There was wisdom that just jumped into my heart. I just knew, just like I, I right now. No, I'm not. I started to slip. I started to give you a secret. I can't give that. Lord, don't let me give a secret. But there, there's things he's placed to my heart that I just know. I know that I know that I know. And uh, I guess the proof is going to be in the pudding when I can go over there and find oil. 
then it's going to remove all doubt. This is one of the places. Just as a fruitful is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. I understand that perfectly. I can't explain it. I can't. In other words, I'm not going <laughs> to reveal it to you. But that's some big important stuff there. One of these days I'll be able to tell you. Next scripture. Even the God of thy father, who shall help thee and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above and blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. All right, and I'll tell you one of the things where it says blessings of the breasts. When you go back and look that up in the Hebrew, there's and there's another scripture that talks about this. It will be like the breast of how do I say this? Like squeezing a grape. And that's that's where it describes it, like squeezing a grape. Well, when you hit a high pressure oil well, like they did, for example, the deep water horizon, it squirted uh, at uh, what was it? Beaumont. What was the name of that well? I'm not going to take time to look it up, but there's the the first big oil well, the oil well that brought America into the current wealthy age of mechanics, of mechanical things, was uh, it shot 200 feet into the air and it gushed for nine days before they could stop it. I can't believe I forgot the name of that. Okay, let's go on. So it's saying that it's going to, it'll be gushing. Bre blessings of the breasts and of the womb. Not talking about having children. It talks about that too, but there's a deeper meaning to it. All right, on to the next one. Blessings of thy father have prevailed to give the blessings of thy progenitors under the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, under the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Now, most of you are looking at that scripture and your eyes are crossing and you're saying, what? That's a very important scripture. And that's the reason I'm not going to say anything about it. <laughs> uh, okay, and then when Jacob uh, has made it the end of command, command he, he gave, see, Jacob, his son, he gave some prophecies to his children in some of those prophecies are talking about oil, but I'm not going to cover that. Okay, on to the next one. Now, as you recall, Moses was up in the Mount Sinai, and again, I've been there. I've been to Mount Sinai. October the 8th, 2022, I walked on Mount Sinai. I've been up inside the rock that Moses struck, and water came out. So I've probably, I, mean, I, I didn't go to where they thought it was the, um, the, the, to this place where Moses was told, take your shoes off, where the burning bush, I didn't go to the burning bush. There's another location called the burning bush there. But I mean, it takes a long time. I mean, you're talking about one whole day to go drive to one spot, maybe one day back to drive to a spot. So anyway, this is where Moses was stood in front of the burning bush. God said, take your shoes off. The place you're standing is holy ground. And then this is where God says, get you up. I'm sending you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, what is milk and honey? Because the Israelites for years kept quoting that promise. God is going to give us the land that flows with milk and honey. But they never have got the milk and honey. They got the land, but they don't have the milk and honey. What's the milk? Well, in the, the mid-1970s, a fellow by the name of Andy Sorrell drilled a series of several oil wells, I should say oil well and gas wells, in uh, Israel. He said he drilled a rather shallow natural gas well and out of that, he got a light showing of natural gas, wood enough to produce, but it came out of sand as white as table salt, meaning the milk is probably the table salt referring to natural gas. Now, what's the honey? Well, there's actually five colors of crude oil. One is the black. That's the one we're familiar with. And then there's the tea. Remember Beverly Hillbillies? He was shooting up some crude. Up, up from the ground came a bubbling crude. A tea, uh, black, I say, how did, how did it go? Um, Texas tea, remember? Well, one of the colors of, I've got them out in the garage. I, I could have dug them down. I didn't think about that. I could have dug them out and brought them and showed them to you. But I've got a video that explains even, as a matter of fact, I've got three videos up there that explains a lot of things I'm not talking about tonight. Anyway. One of them is, is tea colored. Literally, it looks like tea. It looks like strong brewed tea. And that's the reason they call that Texas tea. 
because it's a color of a crude oil. Uh, another one is a red color. That's what came out of the deep water horizon. But the thing I think he's talking about there is this one. Let me show you these. Okay, so this, I got a little flashlight here. I don't know how well you're seeing that or not there. But anyway, that's the honey. Okay, that's honey color. This, as you can see, is not honey. You can tell because it's, it's high viscosity. Shine this up like that, you can see. So if you put them side by side, if you could, I, I wish the light was better, but you can see it's the same honey, same color. So one is literal honey, and this over here, this, is yellow colored crude oil. Now the yellow colored crude oil came from Sprayberry, Texas. Met a buddy out there and he sent me a pretty good supply of it. Um, so when it says, I'm gonna send you a land flow with milk and honey, we think he was saying, I'm gonna send you a land flow with, with gas and oil. But he's given them the gas. Okay, they found gas out in the Mediterranean. And I'm gonna show you the scripture in just a second that proves that but they haven't found the, milk, the, the, the honey yet. And the honey is the big thing. I'll show you. The Lord thy God bring thee into the land which thy father is possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And it would do good to thee, and multiply thee above thy fathers. Well, how is it going to multiply them? See, a lot of people think, oh, this is talking about uh, olive oil. That's not talking about crude oil. All of these scriptures talking about oil, that's not crude oil. That's talking about olive oil. I'm going to show you why that's not true. He made him to ride upon the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Now, the interesting thing here is some of the very best rock to get oil out of is flint rock. So do bees build hives down in the ground in flint rock? No, they don't. Okay, so what is this suck honey out of the rock? What's it talking about? It's talking about oil that comes out of flint rock, as in crude oil. Now, he made him to ride on the high places of the earth. What's that? Okay, does that mean that Israel is supposed to live on the top of the mountains in Israel? No. It means that Israel is going to be the strongest, wealthiest, richest nation on the planet. Well, it sure hasn't happened at this point. I agree. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> But what I think is going to happen when we hit oil in Israel, I don't think it's going to be a little 50 barrel a day stuff. Okay. If we hit that, I can tell them, plug it and keep going. That's not our oil. We want the 5,000, 10, 15, 20,000 PSI oil. We, we want the kind of oil where one well will provide all the oil Israel needs. And then I'll show you the scripture here in a minute. We believe, Hayseed believes, and I agree with him that it's going to begin to dry the wells of the surrounding nations so that the primary producer of oil in the Middle East will be Israel. Nah, that's what it's saying. See, again, you, you can't discern these things by just ink on paper. And what happened to me when I was studying all of this, kind of like with Revelation. I mean, I got 30 revelations, two visions, and an audible voice. And I just, I, I come... Get this stuff out. This book, I, I say it this way. I do not think it is on the level of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But I don't think it's on the level of Stan Johnson either. Because uh, as I was going through this, writing this book, there was like wisdom just jumping into my head like I'd never have ha had happened in my life. I mean, just like Moses, okay? God just put in his brain how to make the tabernacle, how to make the Ark of the Covenant. He just, he just, Give them the wisdom, then go school for it. And that's what happened. He just began to show me this stuff because that's part of what he's got me to do. I know that sounds grandiose. I'm sorry for that, but that's, I'm just telling you the truth. Okay, let's go on. So he made him ride high places of the earth. He made him to eat the increase of the fields. What kind of field? Oil field. He made him to suck honey or yellow colored crude oil out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. And better the kind of milk of the sheep, fat of the lambs, rams of the lambs, Bashan, goats, and fat. All of this is saying they're going to be wealthy. 
drink the pure blood of the grape. Well, this is where he's talking about like squeezing a grape. In other words, it'll gush out. And Jeshurun waxed fat. Now, the Jeshurun is another word for Israel. And there's that word fat, crude oil. Jeshurun, or Israel, became crude oil. That's what it's saying. And kicked. And that means, see, you, again, you can't understand this just by ink on paper. It's in here. And when it says kicked, in other words, when Israel, okay, what was Israel, What was uh, Leslie told? That we'll give the Palestinians a state, but it'd be a temporary measure to allow the Israelis time to strengthen their military. So when it says and kicked, this is talking about Israel will use the fat or the crude oil to strengthen their military. Thou art waxen or become fat or become very much with crude oil. Thou art become thick, as in wealthy. Thou art covered with fatness or crude oil. Then he forsook the God which made him lightly esteem the rock of his salvation. So that's all the reason they didn't get it earlier. And I've got a few scriptures on that too. Now I've got to move along and we're going to get through these tonight. Okay. Covered that one. Okay. Now. <clears throat> So Joseph now calls his sons in, and he's going to prophesy to them before he dies. This was part of the prophecy. And Joseph said, blessed of the Lord be his land. Who's this talking to? Let's see. Okay, this is talking to Benjamin. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell safely by him, and the Lord shall cover him all day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. That's important, but I'm not going to tell you why. And of Joseph, he blessed of the Lord of his land, and of the precious things of the heaven for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath. I'm not going to explain that either, but that's important. Uh, for the chief things of the ancient mountains and for the precious things of the lasting hills. Hmm. Why is he talking about hills? Why is he talking about mountains? That's actually important. For the precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof, and for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush. Let the best blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the head of him that was separated from his brethren. I'm not talking of this. Some good stuff. Uh, and then he said of Zebulun and Issachar, they shall call my people into the mountain. What mountain? There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas. There's where it's saying that they will find of the abundance of the seas. We know it now to be natural gas. They found it out in the Mediterranean, and it's a lot. Okay, they haven't found it all yet. So abundance of the seas and treasures hid in the sand. Well, yeah, there's sand underwater. Or it may be talking about something else. That's all I'm going to say. And Gad, he said, blessed, blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. What? I'm not going to explain it. But that right there, that's real important. And I'm probably the only person on the planet that understands what that's saying. That's real important. That's all I'm going to say on that one. It's important. Okay, let's see. They shall call the people into the mountain. They shall, oh, I read that. I read that. I read that. Okay, hang on. And of Gad, he said, blessed be he. No, I read that too. Okay, hang on. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. And let him dip his foot in oil. That is a very important verse. And I'll tell you what the guys that have drilled the dry wells say about that. They have misunderstood this verse, and not a one of them have bothered to call the prophecy teacher and say, do you have an understanding? Because I would probably say, uh, no, I don't. I'm not going to tell you that. But here's what they say. They say, they say, they wrongly say, that that is saying that Oil is in Asher's area. It's in the toe area of Asher. That's what they say. And they're wrong. They misunderstand. And I'm not going to correct them. Uh, it goes on to say, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Okay, what does that mean? Iron and brass were the strongest metals of the day. And they were used to make swords, and their, their military weapons. So what this is actually saying is he's going to use the crude oil to make Israel's military very strong. Of course, we know that to be a fact. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next one. 
Hang on, hang on. Did I skip one? Let me look. No, I didn't. Okay. When I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. Well, that's another scripture that's just telling you that Israel has rivers of oil. And, of course, again, a lot of people say, oh, they're talking about uh, olive oil. Well, I don't think olive oil comes in rivers, but crude oil sure does. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. All right, now this is a really misunderstood one. See, a lot of people think that captivity there, that's talking about like jail and prison. Wrong. That's that. I, I don't think I can show this to you. I'm going to try here. I think it doesn't pop up. No, you can't see that on the screen. Okay, well, I just have to tell you that. All right, so the word captivity means gathering wealth to one person. Like when there was seven years of famine, that gathered the wealth of all the surrounding nations to Egypt. Well, in this case, when oil is found, massive amounts of oil is found in Israel, that's going to gather the wealth of the world to, to Israel. And he's going to bring back the captivity or the wealth to the people. <laughs> now, the reason is a confirming thing there. It says, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. So if that was talking about jail or prison, they wouldn't rejoice or be glad. It's not talking about that. It's talking about the wealth returning to Israel. I'm about to show you several, many scriptures that has that word captive or captivity. Just understand that's what it's talking about. But I can't show you. So and let's go on. Oh, then my people, oh, this is why oil has not been revealed to Israel yet. As a matter of fact, I'm running out of time. Okay, I'll just cover this, the scriptures. I can try to get to them. Oh, then my people had hearkened and my, to me, and Israel had walked in my ways. If they had, I would have fed them, given them the finest of the wheat and honey out of the rock, and should I have satisfied them. But that didn't turn to him, so he didn't give them the, the milk and the honey yet. When the Lord returned to uh, re, when the Lord turned again to captivity of Zion, the wealth of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then it was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they say among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them, and the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. And He turned again our captivity, our wealth. He returned the wealth to Israel. They that sow in tears, okay, we, okay. So He goes on to say. Uh, I got that. Okay. The Lord hath done great things. I read that. I read that. Okay. Turn again our captivity. I read that. Okay. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy, and he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing sheaves into him. Except the Lord. No, I don't want to read that. This is what I want to read. Okay. Let's go on. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. That would be crude oil. It's for the most part, black. Now, I believe that a lot of what we find in Israel will be this. Yellow colored, colored crude oil, which is, by the way, the highest quality crude oil on the earth. Treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by my name, am the God of Israel. So part of Israel coming around to return to the Lord is when he gives them massive amounts of oil. Everyone that thirsteth come into the waters, and he that hath no money come to me, yea, eat, and buy my wine and milk without money, without price. Wherefore do you spend money for which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye the good, and let your soul be satisfied with crude oil, fatness. Okay, I read that. Thou shalt also delight thyself in the Lord and will cause thee to ride upon the high place of the earth. Second time we saw a high place of the earth, meaning that Israel is the glory of all lands. So I'll show you that scripture in just a second. It's going to be the wealthiest, strongest nation on earth. And that's the reason the Russians and all everybody has come down to attack her for Armageddon. Uh, on to the next one. Then shalt thou see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. <laughs> That doesn't mean you have a large heart like you're having a heart attack. In other words, you're going to be very, very happy. Because of the abundance of the sea, there's your natural gas in the Mediterranean, shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. That forces means wealth. So the wealth of the nations of the world is going to be turned over to Israel. That's what it's saying. 
that shall suck the milk of the Gentiles. In other words, you're going to take their money. That shall suck the breast of kings, and that shall know that I, the Lord, am thy... See, right now, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Kuwait, all of those guys, they've been sucking the breast of all of the nations of really the whole world. Yeah, well, that's about to change. Israel is going to be raised up to be what you watch, wealthiest, strongest nation on earth. To appoint them into Mount Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, oil of joy, that, that's talking about anointing oil. That's talking about olive oil. No, it's not. Uh, the oil of joy is crude oil for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of happiness. We call the trees, the plants are going to be glorified. So what brings their joy is massive amounts of crude oil found. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad in her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all that mourn for her, that you may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations that she may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Not talking about a human. It's talking about massive amounts of oil being sucked out of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. That's not olive oil. Like a flowing stream. What is that? That's a gusher. Flowing stream, then you shall you suck, and you shall be born on her sides, be dandled on her knees. Oops, I skipped one. 66 here. Hang on. I wish you guys could see the side here. It doesn't work that way, though. Let me jump back up to here. I got that one. All right. Got that one. Got that one. Got that one. Okay, I didn't skip one. As one whom his mother com comfort us, so will I comfort you. And you should be comforted in Jerusalem when you see this. Your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire in his chariots. And that's talking about the last day, so I'll skip that. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together into the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil. Now, you might say, oh, yeah, he's talking about eat wheat, you drink wine, it's so oil, that must be talking about olive oil. For the young of the flock and the herd, their souls, their souls shall be watered in the garden. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. Olive oil ain't going to do that. It's crude oil. Skipping on down. Let's see, 14. I get 14. Then shall the virgin rejoice. See, I don't know which one I've saved here, okay? Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn the morning into joy. That's not olive oil. And will comfort them and make them rejoice for their sorrow. And I will satiate. That means totally cover and, and, to, and fill. I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness. That would be crude oil. And my people shall be satisfied with my good, saith the Lord. All of these say crude oil is going to be found. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. As yet they shall use the speech in the land of Judah and in the land and the cities thereof. When I shall bring again their captivity or their wealth, the Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. I will cause the captivity of Judah, that's the wealth of Judah, and the captivity or the wealth of Israel to return. And will build them as at the first. I think that's saying that he's going to build Israel bigger and stronger and wealthier than she ever was in the past, even the days of Solomon. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all, their, pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned, whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be, this is a big one, and it shall be a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all of the good that I do unto Israel, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, for all the prosperity that I give unto her. Now, if that's olive oil, is all of the world going to fear and tremble because of Israel's olive oil? No. Will they fear and tremble because Israel has most of the oil on the planet? Yes, they will. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the... By the way, this is straight out of Revelation 18. Voice of the bride, the voice of them shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And for them shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity or wealth of the land as at the first. This is the second time it said that. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, 
This is probably one of the most important verses. I will perform that good thing, which I promised unto the house of Israel, unto the house of Judah. <coughs> that's one of the <coughs> that's one of the verses he's laid on my heart. Okay, okay, so look, I know this sounds grandiose, okay, and I know this sounds like, are you serious? This is that God is really going to do this to you? I mean, who are you? Well, I'm a nothing, but He uses us dumb, ugly, ugly guys. He's nothing guys. To give him the glory. And he knows this one thing about Stan Johnson. When I go over there and find oil, I'm going to give him the glory. He knows that I will use this to convince everyone I can, especially every Jew I can, that Jesus is their Messiah and that Jesus wants to forgive them and wants them to ask him into their heart. And I will say that. And I believe that they, they will come when. I am speaking to the entire nation somehow on radio or TV or something over there, and maybe even speaking a lot more people than just that, because, okay, who is this pastor that came from Dallas, Texas, that was not in the oil business, that God gave him the money, came over, drilled, and hit oil? Or, like the dream says, I didn't even drill. I, I just prayed, and the oil came forth. Um, all right, maybe I'll tell you that one. So uh, I've got it written down, the exact date, but it was probably in the ballpark of 15 years ago. Uh, I didn't ask for it, didn't know it was coming, but this was the dream. I dreamed that I was at an old abandoned well, a, a, uh, a pump jack block or a pump jack foundation. When I was a kid, you know, I used to play on them. It was this big, giant chunk of concrete about four foot by four foot by about 10 foot. And kind of, you know, they, they put the pump jack on them. I said, get you, see if you can see this. You know, the pump jack, it goes like this. They had to have those on a big concrete foundation. And after the well went dry, then they would pull up the pump jack and move it someplace else. Well, in the dream, I was at one of those and I could see the ground. I could still see it right now because I've been to many of them. So what I played on as a kid. Um, and where crude oil fell onto that West Texas sandy dirt, it, you know, you can see it, you smell it, and it's hard as a rock. Anyway, I was there, and uh, all of a sudden, I jumped up on this four foot by four foot by eight or ten foot chunk of concrete, and I pointed, and I pointed down to the ground, and I said, there is oil coming out of that ground. And about that time, there was a deep shaking. I could feel it. And I could hear it down really, 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 really deep. And then it stopped about that time. Whoosh, oil began to squirt up in a distance in like about eight to 12 wells. All of a sudden, whoosh, squirted straight up and then just fell back silent. And I, I think what that's saying is that when I get the money, we want to go to Israel and we want to pray over five different locations which I'm not going to talk about. And I believe that when we pray over the right location, that will happen, that there will be a deep, deep earthquake that will open the foundations of the deep, allowing the oil to flow up to a closer part of the surface so it can be pumped out. In other words, he's going to release the wealth of the deep. That's what the scripture says. So that, and oh, let me finish the dream. So anyway, I, after the whoosh, and then they fell back down, I turned to my buddy behind me. I said, quick, we've got to go file for the license for this place before people know that oil flowed into the formation. And about that, about that time, uh, papers appeared in my hand and we went off to go file the papers. And I think that I, I don't know that it'll happen that way. As a matter of fact, I was thinking the other day, you know, I've never had a dream come true in my life. I've not one has ever come true exactly the way I dreamed it. So I don't know if that's the way it'll happen or not, but I'll give it a try. So I plan to go over there and pray over several areas and see if there's a shaking. And But that would be pretty convincing if I can go on Israeli TV having hit the massive amounts of oil and they say, man, how did you know where to drill? I didn't drill. Well, what'd you do? Me and a group of other, of other Christians came over here and prayed. 
and God released the oil to previously drill, drilled dry holes. And that's another thing. See, now, this is this next thing I'm about to say is about eight years old, and I have not updated it. I'm probably not going to go to the trouble to update it. But since 1953, there has been, let me get it right, 503 holes drilled in Israel looking for oil. I mean, it's a pincushion. They've been looking every place in, in Israel for the oil. The reason is because all the nations around Israel have oil, so Israel got to have oil. 503 holes. Out of the 503, only seven, at last investigation, only seven were producing, and they were a little 50-barrel-a-day stuff, you know, not much at all. And when, I, I mean, I can see myself on TV you what you you what you prayed you prayed, and there was a big earthquake, and God released the oil to all of these oil wells that were dry wells, and now they have high pressure oil to them. Yeah, well, who are you? And I'm going to say, it's Jesus, your Messiah, the guy that your forefathers hung on the cross wants to come back, and he wants to forgive you, he wants to save you, he wants you to be in eternity with him. He sent me with a message. This is the fulfillment of Exodus 3.8 when Moses stood in front of the burning bush and the almighty I am God said, get you up and send you into a land that flows with milk and honey. This is the milk and the honey was just found out in the Mediterranean. Gas and oil. Okay, let's go on. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. What is that? I'm sending you in a land that flows with milk and honey. On to the next one. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. Now, the reason I put there is because they sure don't dwell safely now. But when massive amounts of oil is found in Israel, and allows Israel to build up their military, and they clean house and all the nations round about them, they will dwell safely. Go look it up. Ezekiel 38 verse 8 says, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. It's not today. It's coming. <clears throat> Yet I will bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days. And after I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon. But it shall come to pass in the latter days, I will bring in the captivity of Elam. When I shall bring the captivity of the captivity of Sodom, that's the southwest end of the Dead Sea, and her daughters, the captivity of Samaria and her daughters, I will bring again the captivity of thy captives in the midst of them. The wealth, massive amounts of oil, wealth is coming to Israel. And no, I'm not selling stock. As a matter of fact, um, I probably won't need any investments. I won't need your help. So I'm probably not going to ask for it. Now, I said that one time, and here come these emails from other Christians said, no, I want to be a part of it. I want in there. You don't, don't cut me out. I want to be a part of finding that oil. Okay, so let's go on. When the sisters, when thy sisters, Sodom and her daughters, shall return to her former state, and Samaria and her daughter should return to their former estate of wealth. Then thou and thy daughter should return to your former estate. So it's saying that when Israel is, finds this oil, all 12 tribes are instantly blessed equally. At least if they ask me my opinion, that's what I'm going to tell them to do. And in that day that I lifted up my hand unto them and bring them forth to the land of Egypt and the land that I spied for them, flowing with milk and honey, this is important which is the glory of all lands. Now, either God is lying or he's telling the truth. Now, you and I know he's telling the truth. So what does that say? It says that Israel is the best land on the planet. That's what it's saying, which is the glory of all lands. And if you've been to Israel, you would say this is the best land on the planet because it's a bunch of rocks and dirt and desert and you know, I mean, there's beautiful places in Israel. I love Israel. I love the Israeli people. But there's a lot of places a lot more beautiful. So it's not what's on top of the ground that makes it the glory of all lands. It's what's underneath. And here's another scripture that backs it up. Yet, yet also I lifted up my hand to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land, which I had given to them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So here's two times. It says Israel is the glory of all lands. And it is. I will feed them in a good pasture, 
and upon the high mountains of Israel. There it is again, high places. Okay, so does that mean we drill up at the very top part of the mountain? No, he's saying he's going to make Israel the most wealthiest, strongest nation on earth just before the Russians come down to attack. The high mountains of Israel shall their fold be there, there, there they shall lie in a good flow of old and in a fat or crude oil pasture. They shall feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will come them to lie and cause them to lay down. I will seek that was lost and bring again that which was driven away. We'll bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. In other words, the time has come. What's it saying? Once again, this is the fourth time we're talking about mountains. Ye mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth or you shall gush crude oil out. It shall be a gusher. You shall yield your fruit of crude oil, which is the milk and honey under the surface, to my people of Israel. So it is the time at hand. For behold, I am for you. Now, this is important. I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. Now, I'm not going to ask the hundred people that are live watching right now what that's saying, because I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, that absolutely means nothing to me. Well, actually, that's something real important when you understand what it's saying. So it's saying, Israel, I am for you. At this point, he will be for them. And I will turn unto you, and you should be tilled and sown. Okay, what is tilled? Well, that's where they take these, if you can see my hand here, these devices behind a tractor, and they drag it, and they open up the soil. That's tilling it. And then, of course, they sow it, and then they get a big harvest. So he says, I will turn unto you. What does that mean? I like the way he explained this. He said that, and I, I, said, I said, well, why do you think that the massive amounts of oil is at the southwest end of the Dead Sea? He said, where's the lowest place on the planet? I said, southwest end. Well, the Dead Sea is the lowest place on the planet, like 1,200 feet below sea level, I believe it is. He said, so where does the water drain in a bathtub? Down to the lowest place. I said, yeah, right. He said, well, we believe that when oil is found at the southwest end of the Dead Sea and in Israel, other places, that it'll begin to dry the wells of the surrounding nations and their wells are going to go dry. In other words, the oil right now, I, I need to get you to see me here. Hang on here. So right now, the oil, let, let's say this is Israel's oil. So right now it's flowing up and over to Russia, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Oman, all of these other nations is flowing all up there. So if you go to the southwest end of the Dead Sea, if you drill a really, really, really deep well and you hit the source oil, which is what uh, he believed and what I plan to do, uh, then all of a sudden you get to the source oil and it now no longer flows up to Russia, over to Saudi Arabia. Instead, at the source down here, it's getting pumped out. So all of a sudden, if there's not pressure to send it up to these other nations, eh, they don't get any oil. That's what I think it's saying. Now, let me jump back to it. Okay, so I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. I think, is that showing two mice there? Surely not. Okay. Should be tilled and sown, and I will multiply on you on the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited. There's not very many people living in Israel right now. And the waste shall be builded, and I will multiply upon you man and beast. And they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. In other words, the best time for Israel is ahead of them. And do better than your beginnings, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So finding massive amounts of oil is part of Israel getting saved. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you. Even my people Israel, they shall possess thee. And they and thou shall be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. And I think I need to bump past that. Yes. Now, let me explain that. So, probably 
20 to 22 years ago, I've told this story, I woke up out of a vision or, or a dream. I, I, I was looking down on a plane. It was about this long, and it was a full, like, a medium-sized jet. And there was a stairway, and there was a line of people getting up on the stairway going onto the plane. And a voice spoke to me and said, two men will get on a plane with a virus. Before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. And I was kind of waking up at the time, and I said, what? And the voice rebuked me. He said, you weren't listening. And I thought, yes, my wife says that all the time. Too. <laughs> so it says, two men will get on a plane with a virus. Before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. Now, for years, I absolutely had no idea why he told me that. But now I know. So I get oil, I get money, I go find oil in Israel. Then along this time, they release another virus. It's a real bad one, much worse than the last one. And uh, the plane goes down. And all of a sudden, there's a, a bunch of airline airlines, say it that way, airlines for sale for pennies on a dollar. I think he's telling me that's when I can buy an airline. Because what he's put on my heart to do is to fly Christians and Jews to Israel. Because Israel is going to be the last safe place on earth for believers to live. Okay, so let's go on. He shall enter peaceably. Oh, now this is the last scripture. This is the Antichrist. It says, the Antichrist shall enter peaceably upon the crude oil places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his father's fathers, and he shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil, which we think is oil, and riches, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time or for a year, which is telling me that this is about a year before Jesus returns, and that's a guess. But it is saying that the Antichrist, is when he finally takes over Israel, is going to want to go down and let me go to the oil fields. I want to see those massive oil fields. And he'll want to see them. He'll want to go there. And I think that's what it's all about. Okay, so let me see. Do I don't have any comments. Okay. Okay, here's some, <laughs> This is the point. All right, now, okay, he says, you're deriving things that are not written, which the Bible says not to do. Okay. Well, Stephen, were you listening? I, I'm, I'm, I, I try to be nice about this, but were you listening when I said information just jumps in your heart? It, you, you understand what the scriptures were saying. It cannot be all understood from black ink on white paper. And if you're critical of me and the way I do that, then you shouldn't watch. Sorry, that's very blunt, but... That's the truth. If you don't understand that wisdom and might are his, if you don't understand that he puts wisdom in us, not just ink on paper. If you don't understand that, then you're missing a major, major chunk. Okay, so I just probably jumped over. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like this guy is just... Oh, well, he is so smart. Look at this. Perhaps the understanding comes the entire study rather than just what is immediately being discussed. I encourage you to watch this video in its entirety and after it's posted. Well, Stephen, you're so smart. My guess is you probably have 100,000 subscribers on your own YouTube channel. Okay. So now you see why I don't like comments up because it's people that don't know what they're talking about, spewing bad things about good people and I just don't need to listen to it. And probably most of the good people out there. Uh, can you just remove him, Sean? Just remove him. All of his comments. Matter of fact, that should have been removed a long time ago. And and we don't want to see him on here again. So that he'll be gone shortly. He'll be gone. All of those will be gone. Come on here with just spewing. It's sad. It's sad that believers want to attack believers. You know, the left, Democrats, you never see a Democrat criticize another, criticize another Democrat. You never see them go against party line. 
they're all marching in unison. But Christians, you know, we're the only army in the world that stabs each other in the back, just like that. So somebody jumps on and starts attacking. Why, why can't it be a brother that says, thank you so much for giving us this insight, helping us to understand this? It's just sad. Spindletop. Yeah, that's the word I was thinking of. Spindletop. There you go. Spindletop. Okay, so Mr. Smart Alec there is gone. And he won't return. He's blocked. I see somebody is trying to tell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there's several here that just need to be removed, Sean. Just, just pull them. Spindle top, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, oil is, is unlimited. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, let's see. I'm nine minutes over. Is there a question or a compliment? That would be nice. In a lot of what the other guy was attacking, like he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Okay, thanks for sharing this. Interesting study. You know, people just like to disrupt things. It's sad. Okay, well, let me pray for you. And, uh, We'll close it. First of all, thank you. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'm very excited to think that maybe this is the year. I uh, probably have been thinking about this for 12 years now, you know. This is the year. I, I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully it's going to be real soon. And we're going to be able to bless a lot of Christians, a lot of Jews, uh, a lot of people. Bless, I mean, it's, it's blessings. So, my Lord, I thank you. I thank you for these people that you've given us, that you've opened their eyes, that you've helped them to see the truth about this. And, Lord, I do ask those people that are confused that you would also speak to their hearts and get them right and get them ready to be serving you in a greater way. Lord, I ask a blessing on the people. And I ask that you would bless them when they come in and bless them when they go out. Bless them when they rise and bless them when they lay down. Make them the lender and not the borrower, the head and not the tail. Give them wisdom from on high. Speak to their heart. Be that voice behind them saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Be the lamp under their feet and light under the path and to show them the things that you want them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, if you have enjoyed uh, what we're talking about and if you would like to donate, if you'd like to be blessed, actually, uh, somebody asked me the other day and says, how come you're so blessed? I said, because of our giving. That, I mean, it's not Prophecy Club. It's certainly not the church, not the Bible study. It's because of our giving. So I'll just say, you know, I hope you have learned the joy of giving, the blessing in giving, because it is more blessed to give than to receive. It really is. And so anyway, if you'd like to be a part of us, you can click on the link over there. And uh, hang on. Whoop, wait, wait, maybe I have a question. Okay, all right, let's see. We appreciate uh, the teaching. Othamay Brand, God bless you, Othamay. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you can click on that and it'll uh, take you over to to give a donation. There's another place to give, give a donation. I thought there was a comment. Really value add the lessons to teach. There are things I don't know, and that's why I tune in to hear the Bible taught by you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, because Christians are a real threat to the devil, so he attacks them. Yeah. Thank you for doing the podcast with Nick, not Mike Adams, actually it is. That's how I found you, and I've been listening since. Excellent. And yeah, Mike was a real blessing. He he said he wanted to have me back on, so hopefully we'll get back on there again. 
so anyway, God bless you. Uh, Leslie's out of town. She's not going to be in town again until Thursday. So I'm missing her so terrible. It's <laughs> like time stands still when she's not here. You know, I miss all the honey does. Honey, would you do this? Why'd you do that? Would you? So she keeps me busy all the time. So it just time stands still when she's gone. So I, I've been missing her terribly. Anyway, God bless you. And I'll look for you this coming Friday night Bible study. And also watch us on Sunday mornings starting at 9.30 Central Time, and then, of course, the daily program with Prophecy Club. God bless you. Thanks for watching.